Who gives this woman to be wedded to this man? It is a wonderful day, a beautiful day to have a wedding. Uh, we've been favored with such wonderful weather here. And uh, a day like today, you could actually have it outside, but it's, uh, it's just a good gamble to have it inside. We're very thankful for that. And from the bride and groom, they are very thankful that you are in attendance today to celebrate with them their wedding today. At this time, uh, you're welcome to have a seat and we'll begin a service. I would have a have a charge here this afternoon on occasion like this before a very assembly of people, friends and family and affiliation, those to whom you're surrounded and behind you love you this time. That's why we're here. And beloved, we are together here in the site, not only of friends and family and those that are here, but we're in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in what we would call holy matrimony. Not a real popular word in the world today, but it is what we call holy matrimony. This is an honorable estate and it is instituted by God, not by man, but by God. And it actually signifies somewhat what we would call a, a, a mystical union between uh, Christ and his church, his true church. Actually, Christ adorned and, and beautified the sacred matrimony uh, at his first uh, presence at a wedding in Cana of Galilee when he turned the water into wine. And it is commanded in the scriptures uh, to be honorable among all, and therefore marriage is not to be entered into lightly or unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, soberly, and ultimately in the fear of God. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. We would go to Psalms 127. It says, The builder's labor is in vain unless the Lord builds the house. How true that is. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard stands, their watch is in vain. If we were to read Psalms 128, Verse number three, it says, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, flourishing, and thy children like all the plants round about thy table. That's a blessing. Family is a blessing. Loved ones are a blessing. If we would go to Ecclesiastes 4 9, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Singleness uh, is good in some context, but two is better. If we were to go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 16, he uses these words that probably would not be popular in our culture. My beloved, 
is mine. And Wes, you may try that sometime in your marriage. My beloved, it works sometimes. And I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. Pleasant. We go to the New Testament, Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. It's that familiar verse that some people, especially wives, uh, wonder about, but it's in the Word of God and we have to obey it. Wives, submit yourself unto your husband. That's the easy thing. As it fits in the Lord. And the bigger of the two phrases in that scripture would be husbands, which Wes is about to be as a husband. Love your wife, us men, love our wives, and be not bitter against them. In marriage, there are things that come into marriage that can cause a root bitterness. A lot of times, us as men, pride gets in the way, foolish thinking and sin. But it does tell us to love your wife. If we love our wife and respect her, they will humbly submit to us in love. If we would go to Mark chapter 10, verse number 9, it says, therefore, what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Unto this holy estate, these two have come together to be joined in holy matrimony. There's been a lot of thinking. There's been a lot of time. There's been a lot of work. There's been a lot of phone calls, a lot of texts. There have been a lot of uh, 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 recommendations by different people. There's just been a large amount of work that goes into a wedding. And when you go into matrimony, wedding, covenant, agreement, a vow, that means that no matter what and whatever that what is we've all had what's in our life Bree and West there's going to be some what's that come in but you can always point back and say hey I made a vow I made a covenant and I'm going to stay true to that that means no matter what the two will remain as one. I've often heard in some sermons at weddings where they take a rope and they intertwine, they pray, they twist, and they pull it firmly together, and then it becomes one. Woven together, intertwined, intermingled, that's what's going to be happening here today. And from this day forward, you guys will be closer than any other relationship on the planet Earth. Even closer than a mother and a baby. It is for better. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. I will repeat, it is better not to make a vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. The vows, an earnest promise, traditionally, or written, their own are more than just feelings here today. It's easy to say seriously on the day of the wedding, yes, 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 forever. But when 10, 20, 30 years go by, sometimes we have to use tools in our life to get us thinking about our vows and our covenants, whether it be seminars, whether it be marriage counseling, whether it be a friend, 
maybe it would be somebody that don't know you personally, but there are times that those type of things have to be sought after. And that's wisdom. Let's look at a couple of those. To be my wedded wife <coughs> is for you, Wes, to say the yes or no. And not I guess or I might as well because I'm in my 20s or I've known her for so long, we dated for so long, I might as well. Or marriages that can be arranged. You remember when Adam or Abraham told Isaac, Isaac, you're getting old enough, uh, let's go get you a wife. Of course, Isaac was like, yeah, okay, yeah, let's go get a wife. So the decisions that were made between those two are far from the decisions that you're making today. Intervene to love and to cherish. And I'm always struck with that word cherish. It's not a word that we hear in our vocabulary every day. Oh, I cherish that. I cherish. It's a word, it's an old word actually, and it's a traditional word. It's a wonderful word, it's a powerful word, it's a lovely word. We must understand love not in the cultural way or a second-hand emotion. If love is expressed in our actions, which fulfill our vows, then we will be free of our emotional ups and downs. Not totally. But when we go back and we think of your people, your people, us together, our affiliations, our loved ones, and we think of the vow, and then we say, yes, I did. I was serious. West, then I'm going to leave this with you before the family comes and lays hands on you and has a prayer of blessing for both sides right in here. Will you love her? That's a question. In all circumstances? Will you love her? In all circumstances, will you put her first? And if you do, the little girl, young lady, on your right will blossom. She'll cherish your love. You'll cherish her in love. Good times, bad times, sickness, health, etc. At this time, we invite both sides of the family to come up and have a prayer. Thank you.
This time we're going to do the vowels, traditional vowels, heartfelt vowels, the vowels that a lot of us that are wedded here today say so even fused, even used to mine, precious couple here. Every now and then we need to be reminded of our vows and what we did and the significance and the power of them. I want to say his full name. I didn't really know what I texted him earlier today. I said, Wes, I always call him just Wes, W-E-S. And I, Bree, I, I call her Bree because that's what Wes calls Bree. <laughs> and Weston's full name is Weston Skyer Neff. And I don't know where they came up with that middle name, but it's a good name. I may mean, end up calling him Weston Skyer. Uh, but I got to go up there because my wife said, don't say anything dumb. <laughs> so, back to the seriousness of Bible. I got a tear in my eye, and there's good reason for that. It's a reminder. Wes, if you would hold the microphone close to your chin, and I want you to repeat after me if you would. I, Weston Skylet, I, Weston Skylet, take me. Brianne Lauren Blake. Brianne Lauren Blake. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better and for worse. For better and for worse. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and health. In sickness and health. To hope. To hold. And to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Brianna, have you grabbed the microphone and just hold it close so we can all hear it, please? I, Brianna Larn Little. I, Brianna Larn Little. Take thee. Take thee. Western Skyrim. Western Skyrim. To have and to hold. From this day forward, from this day forward, for better and for worse, for better and for worse, for richer and for poorer, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and health, in sickness and in health, to hold and to cherish, to hold and to cherish, till death do us part, till death. And the church says, Amen together. We are having a reading ceremony. And letting bands signify the unbroken circle, a simple wedding band. They have long symbolized uh, an enduring infinite commitment between two individuals. It's kind of a timeless uh, singularity that represents love with a beginning and no end. A continuous loop of unity and togetherness. A diamond can represent purity and strength. And as Jesus uh, told the story about the prodigal that come home and placed upon him a ring, I want you to repeat after me. This is just a simple ring ceremony. With this ring, With this ring. I give myself entirely to you. I give myself Three men. Repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, I give myself 
entirely to you. I give myself For as much as Weston and Green have consented together, we've all heard with our ears, right? In holy matrimony, and I've pledged their love and their promise to one another before us and before God, the witnesses, and in doing so have given their pledge, their vow, their covenant to each other, and declared so by giving and receiving of the bands. The pilot is invested in me as a minister of the gospel of Christ. I now pronounce you, man and wife, in the presence of God and in the presence of these witnesses. Turn around and look at them. And I also pronounce you, man and wife, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Weston Skyler Neff, you may now claim your bride.